Okay, let's continue. We were discussing our um, fact that if you are interested in how fast a random walk, standard random walk mixes on the graph, then it seems you may need to study this important quantity, the quadratic form for the graph. And we had some quantities in quotes. We you know, said, well, we want to understand if this is uh, small or large. And what this means is we're going to have to get into some actual calculational detail with this uh, quantity and uh, work out some, some math. So let's enter into uh, some understanding of this quantity. And we'll see that linear algebra really starts to enter the picture here. OK. So as I um, was saying before, uh, let's say we are studying a function of the vertices f that labels each vertex by real number and let's say that we choose a random vertex u according to the special invariant or stationary distribution pi uh, then putting these things together the value of f at u the label of u is a real random variable and it will be interesting for us to study this just from a pure probability point of view as a random variable. So what do we do typically when we have a random variable? We typically first calculate its mean and its variance. So let's do that. Let's say um, the mean of this random variable, which we'll write as the expectation over u drawn from pi of f of u, or Sometimes for shorthand, we'll just write expectation of f. Yeah, it's quite a brief shorthand, but that means the average value of f, not according to the uniform distribution in general, but according to the stationary distribution pi. Um, that's the mean, expectation of f. And uh, let's see a, a typical example. Our favorite typical example is always when f is the indicator of a subset of vertices. Okay, so if s happens to be a subset of vertices, and f is the indicator function for that set of vertices, then what is expectation of f? What is the mean of this random variable? Well, it's the expectation of an indicator, so it's uh, the probability of the event being indicated, so it equals the probability over u drawn from the stationary distribution pi that u is in f. Okay, and this is a very natural quantity um, it's something like the, uh, the weight of the set S, or you'll often hear the term the volume of the set S. It's a bit fancy, but it's actually a nice term, the volume, uh, or even the density of S. But let's, let's stick with these two terms, the weight or the volume of S. And in the case where the graph is regular and therefore pi is the uniform distribution, then this is simply the fraction of vertices in the graph which are in S, the fractional size of S, which is a very natural concept. More generally though, it's proportional to the number, uh, the sum of the degrees of the vertices in S, or the, uh, the number of edges, the number of edge endpoints that are in S. Okay, so this is the right way to measure the size of a set S in a possibly irregular graph. It's through this uh, volume of S, which is the expectation of the indicator uh, of the set. Great. So that's the mean of this random variable. And now let's think about the variance of this random variable. And I should mention that this variance of the random variable will end up um, uh, being some kind of global property of the graph G. So, sorry, of the, the function F. So let's look at the variance. It's uh, the variance of this random variable F of U when U is drawn from stationary distribution pi. Okay, let's also write um, mu for this mean. Okay, so then we know that the variance is equal to the expected value of um, how much the random variable f of u differs from its mean squared again when u is drawn from the invariant distribution pi so uh, that's one formula for the variance um, you know we know another formula for the variance is it's the expected value of the random variable squared minus the square of the expected value so that's expected value again u drawn from pi of f of u squared 
minus uh, the expected value of f squared. Um, but actually, there's one more uh, totally standard formula for the variance of a random variable. And uh, we'll see it uh, in this context just now. It's actually half of the expected square difference between two independent copies of the random variable. Well, let me write that and it'll become a bit more clear. I claim this variance is also equal to the following third thing, a half expectation when um, u uh, is drawn from pi and v is drawn from pi independently of f of u minus f of v squared. Okay, so we take two independent random vertices. We look at s value on these two vertices, take the difference squared, and also multiply by a half. Okay, um, so the fact that this is equal to the variance is actually just a general property of, uh, you know, variance. I'll even show you the proof here really quickly. Uh, the proof is involves just uh, expanding out this square. So as a proof, this is, uh, uh, well, let me just do the quantity without the half. This quantity here is uh, the expectation of f of u squared minus 2 times f of u f of v plus f of v squared. Okay. And uh, this is by linear of expectation, expected value of f of u squared plus expected value of f of v squared minus two times expected value of f of u, f of v. Now, the important thing to remember here is that u and v are drawn independently, uh, but they have the same distribution. So first of all, this expected value of f of u squared plus expected value of f of v squared, this is the same number twice because u and v have the same distribution. This is just two times expected value of f of u squared. And because uh, u and v are independent, the expectation of a product is equal to the product of the expectations. So this is minus two times expected value of f of u times expected value of f of v, which is uh, two times the expected value of f of u squared. Because again, u and v have the same distribution. Okay, so this was all done without um, hanging on to the factor of a half here. But if we put the factor of a half here, then these twos go away, and we have expected value of f of u squared minus expected value of f of u squared, which is this alternate formula for variance. Okay, so that was just a quick justification of a standard formula for variance. But we bring it up because, uh, well, it looks very similar to our formula for the quadratic form of the graph G applied to V. The only difference there uh, between the quadratic form and this formula for variance is right here, how we choose U and V. If we just look at the variance of F, which as I said, we can think of some kind of global variance of the function F, or the global variance of the, the labelings of the vertices. Uh, that involves just choosing independent random vertices, U and V. Uh, whereas the quadratic form uh, involves choosing uh, a random edge uv. So it's more like the local variance or the variance of the function along edges. So in fact, let me compare these two things. Let me rewrite here that this is the variance of f, the sort of global variance. And we can compare that to the quadratic form for the graph at f, which is the exact same formula, except that um, we chose a uniformly random edge UV. So as I said, I really like to think of the, the variance of F of U as just the uh, global variance of the function and the quadratic form as somehow the local variance of the function or the function along edges. Um, for example, just as a look ahead, um, if uh, the local variance of f is always a large-ish fraction of the global variance of f. This is exactly when we call the underlying graph G an expander graph. Okay, but that's just a bit of a uh, something to get you interested for future lectures. 
Okay, so that's great. And it helps us think about the quadratic form of the graph in terms of a more regular concept, the variance. Now we're really going to get into a little bit more of uh, linear algebra because it'll help us, again, compute these quantities. So now I'm going to make a definition which is a little bit um, psychologically disturbing the first time you make it um, because I'm going to make a definition for a non-standard inner product or a non-standard dot product, which is something you're allowed to have in linear algebra, but people are not normally used to it. And again, the reason we have to make this is because we're dealing with irregular graphs. If you only want to worry about regular graphs, then you really don't have to get into this like funny business that I'm about to tell you. But since in life, not all these graphs are regular, I feel that it's good to talk about this. Okay, so let me make a new definition. And uh, this definition is going to be an inner product in the sense of vector spaces. So let f and g be two functions on the vertices of a graph, or two um, vectors indexed by uh, the vertices of a graph. I'm going to define the pi inner product of f and g. So I'll write it as, you know, angle brackets like a normal inner product, but I'm going to put a pi down here to be the expected value of f of u times g of u when u is drawn from the invariant distribution pi. Okay, and the uh, intuition you should have for this quantity, this sort of funny pi inner product of f and g, is just the correlation of f and g, how similar they are. But again, it's sort of weighted by um, the importance or degree of each vertex. So again, if pi is the uniform distribution because, uh, let's say, the graph is regular, then this expectation is just a usual old average of f of u times g of u. And so it's very, very closely related to the standard dot product of f of g, f and g, when thought of as vectors. It's the same as the standard dot product, just divided by 1 over n. We'll use an average instead of a sum. So again, uh, let's think of f and g as vectors now. I'm just stacking f and g's values into column vectors. Okay, and now I have this funny inner product on them. And uh, if, as I said, pi is the uniform distribution, then we're really just averaging the sort of pairwise products of f and g's entries. So we're really just doing the normal dot product between f and g and then dividing by n. And that's not a very big deal. So this is the, let me just say, is the normal um, dot product or the usual inner product for n-dimensional vectors, uh, scaled by 1 over n if g is regular. Okay? Now, if g is not a regular graph, then this is not the regular old dot product. It's some kind of like weighted dot product, again, where you weight the different uh, coordinates, which means you weight the different vertices uh, in proportion to their degree. And this is something that can uh, you know, trip you up the first few times you see it. So if you know, it's the first few times you see it, just focus on the regular case. But if it's the fourth, fifth, sixth, or hundredth time you've seen it, then you know, try to um, get along with this funny inner product. Okay, now uh, you may or may not remember uh, from your linear algebra class the definition of a general vector space inner product, but I want to tell you that this is a valid general inner space, uh, vector space inner product, which basically means it satisfies all the usual inner product properties you expect. So I'll remind you what those properties are. So let me say that this is a is a valid vector space inner product in the sense that it satisfies the following properties. First of all, um, it's symmetric. The inner product of f and g is the same as the inner product of g and f. That's clear. Um, you know, we're only going to worry about real numbers here, not complex numbers here. So none of that funny conjugating the second uh, vector business that we saw in quantum. Um, it's linear in the following sense. If you take, let's say, um, a scalar product of f plus some translation g, and you inner product that with h, then the normal linear thing happens. This is uh, c times the inner product of f and h 
plus the inner product of g and h. All of these things you can just check from immediately from the definition using linearity of expectation, actually. And the last product, which is a crucial product for inner product, is that if you look at the inner product of a function with itself, well, let's plug in the definition for this. So this is uh, the expectation when u is drawn from the invariant distribution pi of f of u times f of u, or f of u squared. Well, the property is that this is non-negative. That's an important property. The inner product of any vector or function with itself is non-negative. And furthermore, oops, Furthermore, um, you have equality, it's actually equal to zero, if and only if, well, the only way this can equal zero, the average of non-negative numbers, if, is if all these non-negative numbers are zero, okay? And remember, uh, strictly speaking, pi as a probability distribution puts at least some probability on at least every vertex because we're assuming the no vertices have degree zero, Okay, so this, uh, this quantity being zero can really only happen if f is zero on all the vertices. So if and only if f is the zero vector or the zero function. Okay, so these properties all together mean that this angle brackets pi thing, oh, I should have mentioned, I should really put pi's underneath all these angle brackets. I'm gonna eventually stop doing that because it's annoying. Um, but I'm always meaning this special inner product here. Uh, what we've seen is that it satisfies all the usual properties of, the, of an inner product. So you should just go ahead and use it like it's an inner product and uh, not stress too much about the fact that it has this like, slightly funny definition. It's just a different weighted inner product. I should finally mention as a bit of a notation, this quantity will be somewhat important for us. The inner product of f with itself, and we're going to stick with like kind of a linear algebra notation. We're going to write this as sort of the squared length of f. Okay, and somehow this, uh, this two in the base here is coming from the two in the exponent here. Okay, so let's just uh, play around with this notation a little bit more, and then we'll have done enough linear algebra for a while, and we can go back to thinking about um, the quadratic form and cuts and graphs and uh, convergence of random walks to the stationary distribution. Okay, so let me just end here with one remark. Let's consider our favorite situation for functions, the indicator function of a generic subset of the vertices. Okay, then um, we can use sort of probability notation as well. Um, I guess we won't use this notation too much, but this is sort of probability notation, the one norm of f. If you think of f of u, when u is chosen from the stationary distribution as a random variable, then uh, this notation is sometimes the notation used for the first absolute moment of the random variable. Anyway, let's just say that it's literally equal to the expectation of u drawn from the stationary distribution of the absolute value of f of u. Okay, and well, f is a zero one random variable, so the absolute values are pointless. So this is the same as expectation of f of u. Uh, without the absolute value. Okay, so this is just the mean of f as a random variable. Which we sometimes wrote like this. Um, but of course, in this case, uh, we furthermore know that f is a zero one indicator random variable. So its expectation is just equal to the product probability of the event being indicated. Which is the probability when u is drawn from the stationary distribution that u is in f. Okay, and this is a quantity we talked about before. This is what we call the volume of S. Okay, so that's sort of the um, one norm of F. But actually, here's another funny point. You see, um, the expected value of F of U, this quantity here, well, um, F of U is either zero or one, which means that F of U squared is the same as F of U because zero squared is zero and one squared is zero. So all these equivalent quantities are also also equal to the expected value of f of u squared, which is, uh, as we saw up here, what we're writing is the squared two norm of f or the inner product of f with itself. Okay, so for um, our favorite,
standard kind of function, the indicator of a set of vertices, um, you know, both this uh, squared two norm or the inner product of f with itself or the one norm of f, all these things are like all equal to each other and they're all equal to a very important quantity, the sort of volume or fractional vertex size of the set of vertices of s being indicated.